Steve, I do a series which we call Self Made. I think for me it's probably more therapy because it's allowing me to reflect on what I've done, um, what I've been able to do. And I think a lot of times, uh, whether you're an artist or a business person, you forget how you got there yeah. and the struggle to get there. How does it feel today in terms of where you are? What's the difference between today's feeling and what it was 20 years ago? Definitely, um, there's certain feelings that I don't have to worry about. Mm -hmm obviously from back in the day. Back in the day, it was like, I needed to pay rent. I needed to pay the day-to-day -day costs of, you know, of what a struggling artist would have to, you know, consider that, you know, to get by. Um, debt and all those issues that actually majority of people have to deal with. You know, when you're trying to strive for a creative pursuit, you still need to worry about two other jobs to make sure that you have the space to be able to do something creative. I'm so grateful that now I focus entirely on my art. My creative pursuit is my business. I was able to do, I guess that was a dream that was I was able to fulfill. Music has always been my foundation, but more so now than ever in the last five years, I've been able to, like I, of course I'm a human being, so my, my inspiration and my interests go out across all different lanes, you know? I've been, a, able to jump into these conversations with scientists and researchers on the brink of breakthroughs in, in science and discovery that, that's so exciting that I could never get in if I walked to the front door, you know, or go into fashion circles and, and talk with fashion designers and learn their wisdom on, on how to develop a line. But if you go back 20 years, 30 years, would you say that these, you wanted to see yourself doing more than just music? Or is that, yeah, it's kind yeah. of evolved? It's definitely evolved, but the, 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 the very interesting thing about when I, where I started with music is, of course, when I was a teenager, I, music was my first real passion into forming a, this culture into my lifestyle. I never really understood what a lifestyle change was before that time. When I found music, when I found, at that time, it was um, straight edge hardcore punk music. So when I was a, a hardcore kid at 14, 15 years old and going to these shows, then I realized, I'm like, there's a community that, that really like, you know, I, I changed the way I dressed, I, I, I ate a certain way. It gave me this, um, a breakthrough to, to learn how to play an instrument, to record music, to, to start screen printing t-shirts. What did everyone, meaning classmates, not forget friends, right. what did they all think of you back then? Well, once I found music as my lifestyle choice and I started kind of choosing that pathway, it then like it's, you know, you are kind of like the black sheep of the class. Sure. You're doing something different than football. You're doing something different than the traditional route that, that, that teenagers would take. Was your family supportive of you doing this? At that time, they didn't really understand what was really going on. They're just happy I was so excited about something. Yeah, they're just like, "All right, cool. You're going to shows. You have some friends. You're skating around. Yeah, yeah. You know, just, you don't break any rules." So when, for you, when was it that? What was a tipping point where Steve Aoki is becoming something where people know who you are? I think the tipping point is more or less for me throughout my life was moments where I found my own uh, self determination in the things I was doing and I found confidence in the different lanes that I was a part of. Do you think, do you think that your fan appreciates the hard work that you put in? To me, it's Steve Aoki is, I'm gonna make it no matter what mentality. I have no choice. Mm -hmm. If you don't fight, you're not gonna get there. Yeah, and, and it's like, it's interesting because, you know, I think that the, that the general rule of thumb is believe in yourself all the way to the end. And sometimes, sometimes you might have to just be like, this isn't gonna work. Yeah. And there's, I mean, when you think about it, every business, there's always like the successful few that really make it, that fought their way, that did everything they possibly could to get there, right? Yeah. But there's also all these other people that, that could have done the same thing, yeah. but they didn't make it, Yeah. you know? And I think the answer really lies all up in here and all up, all, all up in your own passion and your own belief. I will do whatever it takes to get there, even if I lose everything I got. 
And you really have to believe that. It's like with music, because it, it found me mm. in a position where it wasn't about money. It wasn't sure. about anything. So I'll do whatever I have to do. I remember when I was in college, I, 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 was, I was working for a deli, um, delivering this horrible fried foods around town on my bike. And I was working in a call center. And, and then later I was working in a restaurant. And the whole time, my main goal was to put on these shows in my living room, to play my music and to start this label. Sure. And, and do my college, you know? So I, I was doing those three things so I can support what I really love to do. Sure. When do you think 300 shows a year is gonna slow down? It's, okay, so what's crazy is that when you say, I'm like, damn, that's a lot of shows. Yeah. <laughs> when you're in the mode, and when you're able to bring everything that you do, that you love to do in your life on the road with you, it doesn't feel like you're on tour forever. It just feels like part of life. Who was the first person that gave you the break of a collaboration with you? My first single, I was putting on shows in LA and Will I Am was always showing up at my parties. Will I Am was always there and is always supportive. And, uh, and I said, I'm finally making my first original song and I would love for you to be on it. I would love for you to, to, to rap on it and do your thing on it. And he was down because that's, I mean, we're so close, mm. you know, in, in, our, in our nightlife world. And I went to his studio, I played in the beat, and I remember he's got his Blackberry out and he's just recording his, uh, an idea in, into his phone. And then later he grabbed the mic and he started rapping the line, I'm in the house, and that was the hook. And that became first single and I was like all right all right I got my first single and I was with Sam in the car and I point up at a billboard and there's a giant billboard of you for Omnia yeah and I'm thinking does Steve get excited does does that do anything for him today does yeah. does it oh yeah yeah absolutely I'm, I'm like getting the inside, inside all the time when I'm like oh my god there's like a huge billboard of me in Los Angeles the one thing I bought is I own the golden ticket Charlie and the Chocolate Factory I own Charlie Bucket's golden ticket Wow, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's crazy. Which I think is just the coolest thing in the whole world because yeah. to me it means everything. It's yeah. the golden ticket. Yeah. It's what life is about, you want that. What's meant something to you that's made you feel good about where you are? Buying my mom a house mm. next to my house in Las Vegas so I could see her as much as I possibly can. Because when this career took off, and I was on the road as many days as you know. I just, I like, I would think about my mom, but I could, I just had no time to see her. I see her like once a year. And, and then time just flies by. And then your mom is just older. Mm. And you missed out on so many memories, just so many valuable memories that mean the world to me. With new artists that you're adding to the label. Yeah. What do you tell new artists today, whether it's on your label or an up and coming artist today? I always say go back and find your own inspiration and passion in your music. When you when you sample an idea, go back to your own culture. Go back to, you know, like your childhood and and see where you can find a new inventive way to to, you know, revisit a song or or make something brand new. You know, there's there's definitely moments. I remember when when the chain smokers um, they gave me a demo of music. And and before this time they didn't release any original music. There's putting out remixes and they're really good at like remixing and, and making club edits. And then they gave me a batch of original music and, and I was listening to all of them. And I was like, oh, there's this, this one, this one is like genius for right now. And it was selfie. We primed it and we put it out that time. And, and um, you know, sometimes you get those gems from people where they're like, all right, you know, it's either I'm gonna go back to my past and find something that, that defines who I am sure. and I'm gonna put that in music or I'm gonna take a cultural reference of what's happening and you know, put my treatment, my, my music to it and put that out and, and sometimes it's one of those cross-cultural smashes. As a, somebody in the industry, are there places that to you uh, have taken it to a different level? Vegas, Vegas is uh, the hub of where DJs, I mean, hold all the residencies. If you made it in, your, in the DJ world, you go to Vegas and you have a residency. In Vegas, you get the cross culture of not just the United States, but you get you get around the world. Everyone's going there to have their big weekends. And if you can hold down a residency and you could fill in a club when you're competing against the chain smokers and um, and Kygo and Diplo and you know whoever else is holding down that same night, 
then you're doing all right. You know, that's, that's, that's a big, big place for, for the DJ world to come together. Steve, what's next? What do you see as uh, Steve Aoki the next five, let's go f three to five years. Three to five years, oh, that's uh, <laughs> a long time from now. Um, well, I'm getting more and more into uh, investing in future tech companies and in and, uh, and that world. And so I, I know I'm gonna be venturing in that space a lot more. Do you ever feel like you're gonna run out of, the, of an idea for music? Never. No? I mean, I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I travel the world. I meet so many people. I'm involved in so many different cultures. And I'm literally like a walking human sampler. I'm listening and I'm just soaking in culture and sounds and styles and everything I possibly can wherever I go. And I try to bring that in and unleash it in the studio. I'm thoroughly impressed with you. My definition of self-made is you in the sense of your ability to, one, know what you want to do, commit to it uh, for the love of what it is and how it makes you feel. And then three, you're seeing the success and it's able, it's enabling you to do everything you want to do. And that to me is the pinnacle, um, to you. be able to be creative and, and unique and fight harder than everybody. So. Uh, for being self-made, cheers. Thank you very All much. All the best. Cheers.